Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Phantom HD, a new 2.5 inch micro quadcopter by GFRC, which is equipped with the Codex Vista digital transmission system. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, and head outdoors and test it using 3S and 4S batteries. In terms of packaging, inside the box, along with the quadcopter, you can find some stickers, two sets of GFRC 2523 tri-blended propellers, which as far as I can tell are manufactured by Gemfen, a bag with 1.5mm hex screws for securing the propellers to the motors, including some extra ones, a zip tie, two plastic tubes and rubber ends for securing and protecting the antennas of the radio receiver, two high-quality battery velcro straps, a 1.5mm hex key, and two pieces of foam which you can use for protecting the bottom of the quadcopter as the battery is going to be mounted on top of it. In terms of specs, the Gepper C Phantom HD features 1105-5000 kV motors which can handle up to 4S batteries. On the center of the quadcopter you can find the Gap 20A, a toothpick style all-in-one F4 flight controller which came pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.1.7 and features an integrated BLLES 4-in-1 20 ampere ESC. A 35V 220 microfarad capacitor is soldered to the battery pads. The Cadex Vista digital transmission unit is mounted to the top plate using 20 by 20 mm mounting holes, and its antenna along with the XT30 battery connector are secured using a 3D printed TPU part. The latest and improved version of the Cadex Nebula Nano camera is mounted on the front of the frame, and as I just mentioned before, the battery is going to be mounted on the top plate. In addition, you can get the Phantom HD with multiple radio receiver options or without one in case you have the DJI radio controller or you would like to add your own one. As for the frame, its wheelbase is 125mm and it features a true X pattern. In addition to 25.5 by 25.5mm toothpick style mounting holes, you can also find 16 by 16mm mounting holes. The thickness of the bottom unibody plate is 2.5mm and the thickness of the top plate is 1.5mm. The weight of the Phantom HD without a battery is just over 100 grams. I tested it with multiple Trias and 4S batteries, and the weight including a Tattoo Trias 450mAh LiPo battery is 142.4 grams, and the weight including a GNB 520mAh 4S LHV battery is 155.8 grams. In order to set up the Phantom HD, first make sure that the propellers are removed, then activate and update the Cadex Vista using the DJI Assistant tool. In case you have one of the bind and fly versions, bind the radio receiver with your radio controller, or if you have a plug and play version and you're not going to use the DJI radio controller, add your own radio receiver and bind it with your radio controller. Then connect the flight controller to your computer, open up the flight, hit connect, make sure that all the sticks are working properly under the receiver tub, and configure your favorite flight modes and OSD elements. As for the other settings, everything is pre-configured for you. The Vista unit is connected to UART1, the radio receiver is connected to UART2, the AC slash motor protocol is set to DSHOT 300, the gyro update and PID loop frequencies are set to 4 kHz, I'm using an FRSky RX sub receiver, so the serial receiver provider is set to SBUS. Here you can see the power and battery settings, which are the default ones, and here you can see the PID settings, which are not the default ones, so this quadcopter comes pre-tuned for you from GAPRC. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Phantom HD using Trias and Forest batteries. First of all, I can tell you after testing it out that even though it is heavier than a similar 2.5 inch analog setup, it is still very agile and I really enjoyed flying it. In addition, the flight times that I got were pretty good, so the combination of these motors and propellers works very well. Using a 3S 450mAh LiPo battery, you can expect between 3 to 4 minutes of flight time, and using a 520mAh 4S LHV battery, you can expect between 4 to 5 minutes of flight time. Now in my experience, the custom tune works better with 3S batteries, but in order to extend the flight time, I recommend to fly it using 4S batteries, and limit the motor output using beta flight to 75%. In addition, in terms of durability, I can tell you that even though I have yet to crash this quadcopter, the build quality and carbon parts feel pretty good. And you should note that out of the box, the camera is going to be mounted using the front mounting holes, and I recommend to push the camera all the way to the back in order to better protect the lens. So overall, I can tell you that, as I mentioned before, I really enjoyed flying this quadcopter, and this is probably one of the best micro quadcopters that you can currently get for the DJI digital transmission system. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. 
Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye. Close to me.